Evening, hey guys, good evening and welcome, welcome, welcome back to season two of Tea Money Talks. I am your host, Tolu, aka T Money, and on this weekly live series, what we do is we have real open conversations about money. So every single week, I'm joined by a special guest to talk about one money topic or another, and this week is definitely no different. I have not one, but two amazing guests actually lined up for you guys today, and we're going to have some real, real, real conversations about money. In fact, the topic of today's discussion is imposter syndrome, so you might actually think, what has that got to do with money, but we'll, we'll definitely get into that conversation and you'll kind of by the end of the conversation kind of understand the link and why I've decided to talk about imposter syndrome so it season one ended back in November last year and it's only now how many months later that I finally decided to come back with season two and imposter syndrome is one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to come back which is why I thought this would be the perfect topic to start the season with because imposter syndrome is something that impacts so many of us in so many different ways and it really stops us from getting to levels and heights in which we should get to. I did a post on my stories this morning actually asking how many people can say that they suffer from imposter syndrome and literally 93% of people said that they um, suffer with it so I know it's something that impacts so many of us so I think it's good to have these conversations so that we can unearth it and kind of come up with strategies and suggestions of different ways in which we can kind of deal with it as individuals and kind of live our lives the best way we can. So with that being said I have two amazing guests that are going to be joining me today. Oh, oh, yeah, Oh. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey. We are all live. Yes. yes. Well, Hello, Savvy. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to talk. We're about to get into it. Okay, so guys, I have two special guests with me on the live. So we have Christina Edesina and we have Samara Schofield. So I'm going to let you guys introduce yourself, tell the guys a little bit about yourself for the benefit of those people who don't know you, who you are and what you do, and then we can kind of get into the show. Okay, well, I'll <laughs> quick intro. My name is Christina. Um, so what I'm doing at the moment, I can go through so many things. This is where imposter syndrome starts, right? <laughs> so I can go through so many things that I've done, but I'm not going to talk about the past. I'm going to talk about currently what I'm doing. Um, I started a platform called Christina at Home, where I will be you know, um, sharing my renovation journey. I'm having a ma massive renovation journey. Um, I've always been into property. I started um, investing in property at the age of 23 and I've grown a portfolio to um, be managing and I'm a landlord for, for properties. It's something I started with my sister and so it's very close to my heart. It's not it's something that I haven't shared before, which I'll go into later because it's very relevant, um, but it's something that I am happy to share now and it's something that I'll be um, hoping that people can learn from and encourage and inspire um, seeing a woman of colour um, achieve um, something from such a young age. So that's me. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Sammy, over to you. I'm Samira. I'm Samira Schofield. I'm a mummy. I'm a wife. Um, I work in banking. I've been working in banking for about 11 years. So I love what Tolu's doing here on this platform and I've been into people's finances for years. Um, I'm also an online content creator, so I have a YouTube channel, and it's mostly based around motherhood, lifestyle, and just normal everyday life experiences. And yeah, I also share content on here. Um, and yeah, I've created a space where I, I've connected with so many different women who are open, honest, and we just share our normal day-to-day -day life in the hopes to inspire, bring hope, and be relatable to other women. So that's me. Yay! Thank you, thank you. And for those that don't know, I guess, because I've got people coming from Christina's page and Samira's page, my name's Tolly. I'm Tolly Frimpong, and on my page, what I do is I share loads of content all around personal finance, budgeting, and frugal living tips. So I have a YouTube channel and a blog where I share loads of content all around finances, my own personal financial journey, and things that have kind of helped me get to where I am financially at the moment. And yeah, that's literally what I do on my platform. So thank you for all joining us. I see you guys have brought so many new guests to my page. So thank you. Thank you all for <laughs> tuning in. These, these these sessions or these lives are actually interactive sessions. So you guys that are listening in at home, feel free to chime in if you have questions, if you have comments, just get involved in the conversation as we're going. So yeah, it's definitely an interactive session. So before we dive into the meat of the conversation and the topic for today, I like to do a little bit of icebreaker with my guests. And as much as you guys are my close friends, your guests <laughs> on the show. So I have to give you the special treat that I give everybody else. So we're going to be doing this icebreaker. And it's basically a would you rather. So I'm going to give you two options. And then you tell me which you would rather do. And yeah, tell me why if we have enough time. Okay. And you guys playing along at home, 
you can also play two so you just pick a or b or one or two whichever one's easier for you so you can pick which of the two you'll do for each question so the first question that we have is would you rather have more time or more money more time oh. definitely more time you both said that at the same time yes 100 <laughs> percent. well i yeah yeah no more time more time more time well, more money would be nice maybe not more money would be nice definitely <laughs> I well, think time, time, hundred percent time, time. Time, yeah, definitely. Okay, would you rather rewind, have a rewind button, or would you rather pause your have a pause button on your life? So, would you rather rewind, turn back the hands of time, or would you like to pause? We've got a lot of time, 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 money. We had um, one person say money. I think that's, that's hard. hard. Go for, go for it, Samira. I, think that's I would hard. say rewind because obviously there's certain things that you would like to write that you did wrong or you felt you did wrong or go back and spend more time with loved ones you've lost or things like that. But at the same time, if you rewind and that kind of alters your future, which mm. obviously you're not meant to know that what happens in the future yeah. or affect that in any yeah. way. So yeah, I would say- I, I completely agree. I agree. Yeah. I don't know, that's a hard one. I think it's a hard rewind. One. I, I definitely agree with what Samara said, that I would want to rewind because of like loved ones and like, and you know, you want to see loved ones and, and spend more time with them. But at the same time, I don't think anybody on here will be the person they'll be today if they exactly. had to rewind. I think mm -hmm. what we've gone through has made us who we are. But what I would say is that I would love to pause because like COVID has been a massive opportunity for us to pause and that <laughs> pausing has done like wonders for me. And like, it, it's, it's been, a uh, it's been a godsend, I think for the pausing to really reflect on what really matters in life. So I think definitely pause. Yeah. I would like to pause too. I'd like some more time to sleep to be honest. So if I could just pause <laughs> for the next 24 hours, that would be fantastic. <laughs> I could sleep for a bit longer. No, okay, so we get a lot of pauses actually in the comment section. So a lot of people agree, pause, pause. I didn't see anybody. Oh, rewind. Isaac said rewind, but everyone else was saying pause, pause, pause. Why do you want to rewind, babe? I hope you don't want to undo the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rewind and try again. Let's <laughs> <to> choose again. <laughs> no, stop it. I think Sorry, you, you okay. might rewind, but then you'd probably regret it once you did rewind. Mm. Exactly, mm. exactly. Yeah, well said, Chris. Fire said. Okay, so the next question we have is, would you rather be without internet for a week or without your phone for a week? Mm. I can answer. Oh, I'll say internet. Internet. Really? Like no, phone. Phone. Mm. What well, uses the phone? You can like still it. connect with people <laughs> outside of your phone. So I would say I'd rather have internet. No, is it? No, I'd rather have my phone because really, truly, without the internet, what am I doing with the phone? So yeah, no, I'd rather not have my phone because I've I've been without a phone many times. Yeah, so when you'd I rather have phone. internet. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'd rather have the internet. Yeah, exactly. Okay, <laughs> would you rather have a job that impacts your that? Huh? Would you rather have a job that impacts your society, so the world around you, and makes little money, or would you rather be famous for something trivial but have a lot of money? the first one yeah <laughs> yeah that's so have first. an impact but less money yeah definitely, definitely. first one yeah. yeah it would be nice no. to have more money but who wants to be known for something trivial that's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> no 100 percent. totally agree okay and yeah that was the last of my questions oh well done you guys have got sports thanks for taking part <laughs> no thanks for that that's good it's good. It good no it's good okay so moving on to the heart of this conversation and why I really wanted to get you guys on to have this conversation with me because obviously we're friends so we speak privately about these kind of topics anyway but I thought it would be really good to have this conversation on Instagram live so that we can <laughs> kind of let people see the other side because I think a lot of times people have perceptions of what reality may be for people without necessarily knowing their stories or knowing what they actually go through privately if that makes sense so I thought it would be good for people that maybe have this imposter syndrome as well and it's stopping them from a kind of doing what they want to do to know that actually other people have it too, but they just have, they are able to overcome it regardless kind of thing, or they're able to kind of push forward regardless, or are they able to push forward? It would just be interesting to kind of explore that conversation. So I guess, first of all, the first question I would ask you guys is what does it actually mean to you? Like imposter syndrome, because it's one of those phrases that's kind of bandied around and it's like, what does it actually mean? And yeah, what does it mean to you? 
Yeah, I've been thinking. I've been have been thinking about it a lot actually since you know we you, you asked me to do this live, and it's it's a thing where I thought that it, it actually comes from within, but I feel like it's come from past lived experiences in terms of people telling you not good good enough. So I think the easiest example is a job that, and most people have a job. So in terms of you getting uh, applying for a job and then having that job and not feeling good enough to do that job inside. But where does, that actually, where does that feeling of not feeling good enough come from? I think it's ex like past experiences where you've been told that you're not good enough to do something. Or it's more of an, ex I think it's more of an external feeling of a lived past experience that you've had, whether it would be with starting from um, primary school, or secondary school with teachers telling you that you're not good enough in t certain subjects. And then that graduating on to university, um, getting a first um boyfriend or girlfriend or not being the one getting picked out of all your friends to get a boyfriend <laughs> or girlfriend <laughs> it can be like that and I think it stems from all of kind of that kind of imposter of not ever that doubt that you have inside not ever feeling like you're good enough and just using a dating experience like I remember like you know when you're younger it's kind of like the uh, the onus is on the man to approach the woman and to ask them out on a date and then uh, and you as the woman have to sit around and wait to be picked so like you're right. you're being measured again if you're good enough whereas and i think that's where probably why it doesn't affect men as as much you know they have you got you know um surveys out saying that men when they apply for jobs half of the things listed on a job description they can't do but they still apply for the jobs and us women <laughs> we need to get like 90 percent of those things on the list before we can say we can apply for that job so just little you know scenarios of anecdotes that i looked at uh, those type of things i think it all stems from within but i think it's ex the external environment that has caused those feelings to um metastasize and to and to grow no 100 percent what do you think, Sam? Yeah, I would say the same. So, you know, like Chris said, um, things that have happened in the past, maybe like past traumas, words that have been spoken, seeds that have been sown that you can't undo, you can't unhear, things that you've actually taken in and starting to believe it yourself. And yeah. even if it's not from external, it could just be your own, like how you see yourself, what you think of yourself, where you think you're, you're supposed to be based on, I don't know, like, where you grew up or where you're from or the people in your family and yeah I would say definitely relating to career you know especially if you're African you, you know grew up in a, a African household it's like what is your future who are you going to be all of these things that are pushed on you that kind of make you feel small like can I do these big can I have you know these big goals and achieve these big titles and yeah like just that those voices that kind of take over um, but yeah, definitely relating to career, I would say. And it, it's kind of like a, you almost see yourself as a fraud. Like, what am I doing here? Who sent me? I'm not good enough for this role, this job. I'm not good enough to be doing what I'm doing or I don't fit in this space that I'm in. And yeah, so external voices, past traumas and also how you see yourself. No, totally, totally agree with everything you both said. And I think from my personal experience, I can sort of share a story actually of a time <laughs> when I first graduated. I graduated in 2008. I think I'm kind of exposing my age there, but I <laughs> graduated <laughs> during the recession. And I remember at the time applying for job after job after job after job. I can't even tell you how many jobs I applied for and how many interviews I went for. And I even got to a point where I got an offer and then the offer got re um, retracted. And it was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> nobody wants me. And it was oh, so disheartening at the time and I remember like I must have I don't even know but I got a lot of rejections back then so when I did finally get that job at my company and I finally like made it into the doors I was like wow I made yes. it yes they've given me a seat at the table like I was just so happy to even be there that I just felt like not that I didn't belong, but I kind of did feel like I didn't belong because it was like, I was just happy for that opportunity to be in that space as opposed to realising that actually, no, I earned that place there. I did the interview. I passed the interview. I have the qualifications. I'm more than able to do this job. But I think that whole, my experience of getting to that role kind of played with me for a lot, stayed with me for many years. I was there for so many years as well. And even the thought of moving jobs, it stopped, it stopped me from moving jobs because I kept on replaying the fact that, look, it took you 20 interviews to get this one job. Where are you going? Like, just be happy yeah. you got a job. And it was a fear of actually being able to go anywhere else if anybody else would take me. So, yeah, I could, def I could definitely relate to previous experiences kind of shaping our, our worldview and the way we perceive ourselves. And I guess also seeing other people as well, the way other people 
are able to maybe do the things that you want to do or the things that you think you like things you'd like to do and you think oh, I possibly can't do it because this person's doing it and that person's more qualified than me and you just think yeah. you don't see has you don't see yourself the way other people can see you so you don't see how valuable you are or how much experience you have or how good you are at what you do because it's what you do you just kind of take it as a given so like your work experience today and your life experiences today has brought you to where you are today and that's a lot of value in it but you might not necessarily see that value because it's just something you've always done if that makes sense whereas somebody yeah. else has that same experience and that same value, but they take it and they monetize it. They're like, oh no, actually, I've got 15 years of experience in sales and I'm going to now be sales director. I'm now going to go and do corporate selling. I'm now going to um, do consultancy services for these top 500 companies. Yeah. Whereas somebody else has that same exact experience as that person, but just thinks, I, I can't possibly do that. that. I'm not qualified yeah. enough. So it's yeah. crazy. I completely heard it. I think the time when I woke up, to that um because i remember most african households oh in order for you to get a promotion you've got to work hard you've got to put your head down you've got to be you know you've got to come in on time do the job the best you can do in order for you to be seen to get that promotion and it wasn't really seen that you had to go and ask for that promotion you had to wait until someone put the crown on your head and mm. if i could quickly learn over the years that that was that especially working in a sales environment that that you cannot wait for someone to tell you that you deserve a role that you yeah. deserve to, you've got to go out and get it yourself and i think that is part of the imposter syndromes because no one has told us yet that you're good enough to get that role therefore why should you have that role because exactly. no one has actually told yeah. you you're, you're just waiting and just like just like the dating experience we were waiting you know just like, just like the teacher waiting to be picked. We, were yeah. waiting, we were waiting for somebody else to tell us that we were good yeah. enough and i think that was that's the main problem like it's only you know the last i would say towards the end of like you know the last probably five years i started to realize that no i'm not going to wait for nobody to tell me that i'm good enough if i'm going to do something i'm going to go out and i'm going to go and get it i'm going to go and apply for a job that if they don't want to give me the job here i'll apply for that managerial job somewhere else and that's exactly what i did in my career i went to go and apply for jobs at somewhere else if i'm going to start a business i'm if no if the bank doesn't want to lend me money because i'm a woman of color and i'm a mom i'm going to go and get the money myself and i'm going to go and do it myself so, and that's exactly what i did i there comes a point where you just cannot wait to be crowned and told mm. that you're good enough you just have to believe in yourself and just and just go for it and as much as i'm saying this i still have those negative feelings and negative thoughts it all it all stems from and it's you know we could say it's external fact people can blame like jobs and stuff like that but my one really started from my parents because my parents is the one that instilled in me that you need to wait before someone mm. tells you that you're good enough in terms of like the job the job arena not not in life like you know they told me that i deserve love and all that stuff but in terms of the job arena and being in this country they told me you've got to wait until someone could and if i t came back and told them i didn't no one looked at me for promotion or no one nominated me they'd be like Oh, maybe because you didn't work hard enough. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I wasn't picked. Mum, I wasn't picked to go on that trip to go to go to Buckingham Palace. Like all the clever, <laughs> clever white girls. Gifted and talented. Yeah. yeah the gifted and talented club. Oh, you must not have been good enough. Maybe you get an A. So yeah, I think definitely imposter syndrome is is definitely stems from always being told that you need to be certified before you before you're good enough. Yeah, you know? I think as well is 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 it's rooted in fear, like the fear of mm -hmm. failure and the fear of not meeting the mark, not being, because per, like there's a lot of people that are perfectionists and they don't even realise they are. They they have to wait to get to a certain level before they believe in themselves or they think they're good enough. And it's like, no, yeah. if you don't believe in yourself now, how are you ever going to go from A to B, from B to C? You, you can't move forward if you're constantly thinking, where is me? I'm not good enough. I'm, you know, like you said, Chris, waiting for someone yeah. to tell you you're good enough you have to believe it yourself and you have to go out there and show people that no I do deserve to be here and I think as well when you have imposter syndrome I've definitely been there before where you kind of like thank you so much for having me like you walk around as if like you know people just you know as if you are the person that didn't go for that role you you're not the person that was qualified to be here they are not lucky to have you you, you walk around feeling like you know thank you so much for giving me this chance. And I think there's a difference between being humble and having like, there's nothing wrong with being nervous. There's nothing wrong with being fearful or, you know, if you've got a big opportunity that's coming your way, there's nothing wrong with, you know, 
not being a hundred percent feeling a bit nervous but if you go in there thinking that you don't don't deserve to be there that's gonna that's gonna come through i remember one time um i've spoken at quite a few events and i remember one time i was speaking at an event and literally halfway through talking i just stopped i looked around me there was this big crowd in front of me and i was like what am i doing here and i just froze like what am I doing here? I'm not good enough. This person saying this, this person saying that. And I don't, and I literally just froze. And in that moment, I had to psych myself up and snap back into action. Like, no, you do deserve to be here. They called yeah. you, they chose you for a reason. And I think it's just about training your mind how to think because, you know, obviously there's certain things that you can't control certain thoughts that come in your head. But at the same time, when those thoughts do come, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to believe it or are you going to, push it to the side and counter it. So yeah, yeah. you definitely have to train your mind. No, it's had... easier said than done, definitely. Is it not? <laughs> Isn't it just? Oh my yeah. days. Because it's funny you say that because I had the same experience um, just the other day when I spoke at the Black Girl Finance Festival. And I remember I was like third up to speak. So I'd listened to the first two ladies' presentations. They were absolutely amazing. And then as I go, go as the second one is like getting towards the end of her, her talk, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Tolly, you're up next. And straight away, that whole, Tolly, what are you doing here? Like, what, 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 why are you on this panel? What are you going to come and now say after these two women have spoken? Like, you're not even, you don't have a background in personal finance. Like, just stop. Like, it just literally, all of these thoughts were just plaguing my mind and telling me, like, no, talk, what are you doing? You're a fraud. You're like, a phony. Get out of here. Stop speaking. <laughs> just quickly close your laptop and just say you had technical problems. Like, I was thinking of all the ways I could just get out of speaking. But I'd come that far and I didn't want to let the lady down. And I was like, no, I just have to do it. And I just went ahead and I just shared my presentation. And then the feedback was so amazing. And it just made me think, we really need to stop like second guessing ourselves and stop thinking the worst when it comes to our abilities and start believing in what we have to bring to the table. Because like what you were saying, Samira, there was a reason why she asked me to speak in the first place. Like there's so many black women speaking about finance on Instagram. She didn't have to ask me to speak. She asked me to speak for a reason. So yeah. if she can trust that I have something to bring to the table, why am I doubting what I have to bring to the table? So I just kind of had to just be like, Tolly, get over it. You can do this. You have something to say. Like you've practiced, you've done this presentation, you know your story. At the end of the day, I was literally sharing my story with the steps that I took to pay off my debt. So it's like, you know this at the back of your hand, so why are you scared? Why are you thinking that you can't do this? Yes, you can. So literally, this is the whole pep talk I was having with myself for the 10 minutes before <laughs> I went live, and then I just had to get on with it. But that imposter syndrome thing is so annoying, like, because you, 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 you will talk yourself out of so many opportunities because of it. And there was a time, like, if she had asked me to speak at this event two years ago, no way on earth would I have said yes. Like, <laughs> me, I'm going to advise, you know, you guys know me very well, so you know speaking is not what I do. Like, I can speak for England, like, us having a conversation on the phone we can be on the phone for four hours but standing <laughs> up in front of uh, it's so funny yeah? i don't know if sean's still on this um live but he even um messaged me one time after i'd done a live he was just like oh my god Steve, i'm told you you're speaking on you're speaking on um what did he say I was, I was speaking on a live or something and he was just like wow i can't believe you're speaking you're the same one that didn't want to speak at your friend's wedding like that's how bad it yeah. was. <laughs> you speak at somebody's wedding. and then now i'm coming to be giving talks to hundreds of people online like yeah. make but the, the main overarching reason why I wasn't doing it all that time was a fair thing. It was just scared. And like, what if I fumble on my words? What if people are judging me? People are looking at talking about thinking, uh, look what you look like. Just all these bad thoughts. <laughs> like, trust me, it's nuts, the things that we tell ourselves. Yeah. But you yeah. just have to get over it. You just literally have I to think, get over it. I don't know if you remember, T, but remember when <laughs> I went to... Um, <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass you. Oh, but God, yeah. <laughs> I went to um, a women, it's called Women in, I can't, I can't remember, it was a women's network club, basically. And I think I called you on the way there and I was just like, I'm going to this women in networking club and it was in High Street, Kensington. It was like in Kensington somewhere. So I'm really posh. It was like in a hotel. And um, to, I remember you like, are you going? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going. Like, it's going to be amazing. I, I was actually nervous, but, ex but nervous excitement. Mm. And then I remember you, I remember, I think I finished and I remember you telling you, and, she, and well, I was like, you know, I was only the only black girl there. And I was literally in a room filled of um, white women, also middle aged white women. Um, and I think later on there was actually, no, actually, to be fair, there was a, another lady who came later on who's a woman of colour as well. But it was a majority of the women there were middle aged white women. So I was in my 20s at the time and I never felt so out of place 
And I think imposter syndrome kicked in for me there. I was just like, okay, am I in the right place? Because <laughs> <laughs> I really felt, and it was nothing to do with the women. The women were so welcome in. It was really, really nice. But I just felt like, number one, I'm in this like really posh place. And number two, I'm surrounded by people that don't look like me. And the imposter syndrome automatically you know, sat in because that it was all the women around had their own businesses. And, but, you know, I'm still friends with many of these women. Um, even some of them were lawyers. Some of them helped me with um, employment issues <laughs> and everything. So like, I mean, the point is, is that what I'm trying to say is that, you know, I think as women, we've experienced the imposter syndrome, but as women of color, we also experience the imposter syndrome. And it's something that I feel like, it was it was a strange experience when I was when I was speaking to you about you like you were even like really like how did you feel did you feel comfortable like like you asked like yeah yeah after well you know you you get you know it's fine it's fine and just you know people but I think that we have that past lived experience again coming back to haunt us about not being accepted um because of the color we are and and you know I everyone always says oh race card race card but you know you know when you watch the media and when you watch a lot of things around you of all the negative connotations that are associated with people of color being an immigrant in a country as Samara as you said you know we you know you should be happy that you're here that you know that, that kind of whole attitude especially like if anyone saw like the Oprah Winfrey and all that stuff it's kind of like you should just be grateful that you're yeah. even here like, that kind of attitude and I think that's the type of attitude that you know that is that we've had to grow up with and live through and I think it does resurface time and time again when we're put in positions where we don't see people like ourselves and um and it's and it's nothing that nobody else can do I think it's just a thing of where we have to silence those internal critics and just tell ourselves you know as we've been saying from the beginning of this life that we are good enough that we need to believe in ourselves and we do have every right to do anything that we want to do as much as the next man or the next woman, regardless of the colour of their skin or where they're from. 100%. percent um, i am just realising that I haven't actually read any of these comments, guys, so forgive me. I'm going to go back now and quickly go through, a, um, go through your comments. So let's just catch up on everything you guys have been saying. So we've got... Hold on. Um, also working in typically male-dominated environment in my experience. So in terms of be, feeling like an imposter, yeah. Yeah, that does happen, especially let's say you're in, I don't know, working in IT or whatever, and it's all guys in the team. That definitely does have an impact on you feeling like, I don't really belong here kind of thing. So I totally agree with that point that you made finance, finance, finance a boot. Have I said that right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and Wigs Inc said, also being the only person of color when you work in that room. So that's literally what you were just talking about, Christina, just now. So yeah. true. Um, Come on, Chris, the fire's agreeing with what you were saying there. Thank you. Um, what's the worst that can happen in terms of, I guess, work experience, in terms of you just doing you and being you? I think that's what Wigs Inc. was referring to. Totally go, totally go get her. Yeah. Um, better you into great points. So true. We are the samos samosas. Of course, I imagine. A Samoa, sorry. Look at me just killing your name. Sorry. <laughs> we are. I said the samosas. A Samoa. Yeah, name. that's, that's a funny name. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> um, build a fair and do it anyway. That's the, my motto. Yeah, that is, and that is literally wig, wig zinc. Like, yeah, build a fair and do it anyway. That's kind of how I live my life right now, literally. Even before coming <laughs> on this life, just now. Anxiety again, but I was just like, do you know what? We just have to do it. I just have to. Yeah press on regardless so believe in yourself again he says yes believe in yourself word 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 <laughs> okay so we've got people agreeing come word, on word, word, word. <laughs> <laughs> resonate yes exactly you were great at black girl finance festival oh thank you thank you yay see that was a good review there <laughs> so true yes wedding tolly has come a long way thank you sean yeah you see pw squared <laughs> <laughs> that's a private joke um yes yeah, she has 100 at six. oh thank you thanks guys um i went to a meeting once and a lady asked me to make her a what? sorry I'm sorry, i haven't even read the whole comment yet i went to a what meeting once and a lady asked me to make her a coffee i was kind i kindly told her i was <gasps> that is so bad can you imagine do you know what yeah just on that point i think <laughs> like when talking in the workspace and things like that sometimes yeah. you go in and you're confident but then people 
bring out that imposter syndrome like mm. for example that if you go in and you feel like yes i'm meant to be here and then somebody comes to you and says oh can you make me a coffee you're gonna automatically think like why me oh am i the one that looks different i'm the one that shouldn't be mm. here and i think that's why your mind needs to be so strong you have to have built yourself up before you even walk into those places because sometimes people do it intentionally like mm. you know, if they see you're confident or they see, oh, you know what, this she's different from the rest. And I'm talking I am talking yeah. race here. Like if they see that, you know, oh, you know those comments like, Oh, oh, you talk quite well or yeah. like <laughs> they're surprised by, you know, your kind yeah. maybe being a certain way. And it's like, yeah. no, like <laughs> like Tayo said, you have to quickly, you know, you it's like, Oh, you, you love Jay Z, don't I you? I am meant to be here <laughs> and no, you can definitely go make your own coffee. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, your mind has to be on point. Mm -mm. Oh, God. the race car exists because of racism. Simple. I hate when people say, "Oh, you're playing a race card." No, you're being racist. We are treated differently and told we are not. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone's agreeing. Oh my gosh, I'm not good. Finance reboot. I said finance. A what? I don't know what I called your name. That is so bad. I'm just seeing it now. Finance reboot. Yeah. All this time I've been getting it wrong, sorry. Um, hundred percent. Sam's right, yeah. Yes, she did it on purpose. Yeah, of course she did it on purpose. Crazy. But yeah, we're all caught up with the comments. So thank you guys for all your engagement. Okay, so moving on. I think to be honest, we've covered a lot of the questions that I had written down just by the conversation flowing, which is always a good sign that the conversation is flowing naturally, which is amazing. If you guys that are tuned in have any questions for the ladies or for myself, then definitely add it in the comment section below. And if any of you actually want to join in the conversation, we've got space for one more. So if you're feeling brave or you want to come and say hi and jump on the live with us, let me know. And you can request to join, I think, to join the conversation. Um, okay. So... Imposter syndrome. So your experience, do you have any particular examples or experiences of imposter syndrome that you could share? And an example, and I guess how you overcame it or what you did to kind of counteract that feeling? Um, oh, got to be... It's funny because, like, as Samira said, I've, I've, all the job roles I've gone into, I've gone in with real confidence, thinking that I can do this job, especially if I read the job spec as exactly what we said before, like, we're looking at 80 to 90 percent, that confidence that you can, you can do the job. Um, I think probably my imposter syndrome has come from places like maybe when I started my own business or, um, just not, for me, just not feeling right in a setting. Um, probably am i thinking of way back but maybe my, actually to be honest with you maybe my first job because that was something that i went into without having no prior experience just um probably ad hoc stuff that i did for my family so basically i studied biotechnology i did science and then i went into when i got back um i did a year's placement in biotechnology and i decided it was the most and forensics i decided it's the most boringest thing you can do it didn't look like nothing like csi <laughs> I was stuck in a lab. I thought it was boring. So I went in, I transitioned into going into events, but I didn't want to do a degree in events. I just wanted to get straight hospitality experience. So my first job was actually uh, an events man, events assistant. And um, I was doing that role. And um, the manager at the time knew I didn't have a hospitality experience, but she still gave me the role nonetheless. And I just remember I had to learn so many new things in the job. I just remember her making me feel like an imposter because there was two of us that started the role, two new starters with both events assistant. Um, but actually what I ended up happening at the end of both of our contracts, um, we, our, both our contracts got renewed because um, I made a mistake. She gave me a hard time. But the managing director actually um, gave me, um, promoted me to manage a whole event department and a new restaurant in the city. Whereas um, the event assistant that I was working with was still working directly underneath my event manager. So basically I became an event manager. So, but at first she made me feel like I, I wasn't deserving of that, of that role. And then that made me feel like an imposter. So yeah, that's, that's probably the times when I didn't feel welcome when I was doing a role that I wasn't necessarily qualified to do and so then how would you say you handled it what did you do in those instances um, were there times where she would like just say something to kind of undermine you or kind of make you feel a certain way and how did you kind of I remember you was working back there you were there for quite a while and you 
climbed the ranks quite quickly as well. So how yeah. were you able to, despite not having that hospitality experience, able mm -hmm. having that manager that doesn't even think you should be here, but yet you were still able to do so well while you were in that role? I think um, I think that I quite and that managed to navigate making um, building relationships outside of that manager, and that probably helped me because a lot of people that I worked um, across with, from the suppliers to the, to the external clients and the other in-house teams that were there, like the, the kitchen, the chef, the waiters, everybody that worked in, in the front desk, I built really good relationships with them, and they gave me, they helped build up my confidence and tell me that I'm really good and I was, had really good interpersonal skills, which I think is quite crucial for event management roles. Um, so that helped me. Uh, so again, I, it's, it's sad to say, but I did rely on external influences to help build up my confidence and it's only up until recently into the last five years that I kind of gave up on waiting for an external influence to tell mm -hmm. me that I'm good enough I think the last five years I've kind of just said you know you got to get it together yourself like no, no more waiting for someone to say that you're um you know you're you're qualified to do this role or you're good enough to do this role and a lot of I mean I, I remember a manager said to me um, I think I was about 28 at the time, and by this time, uh, myself and my sister, like we, and you know, the family, we've we, you know, we've managed and built up properties together, and I was like managing tenants, and I've been managing tenants for the past seven years. Uh, was about probably about four or five years at this point, and I had a, and I, I wanted to go for, um, I was in the sales department, I wanted to go for a sponsorship role, and I remember a manager telling me that I wasn't um, commercially, I didn't have any commercial acumen. And I thought it was hilarious because I was just like, I, you know, I, and the reason why I thought it was hilarious, because obviously I've built up all this commercial negotiating contracts, moving in new tenants, negotiating, you know, rents with them, um, negotiating suppliers of cleaners, you name it, utility bills, going this, thinking of ways to grow the portfolio, you know, HMO licenses, we can go on. I had all of that experience built up and I had a, I had a manager told me I have no commercial acumen and, it was so kind of like an awakening moment for me to realize that actually you're being really <laughs> undermined here. And you're not, you're, you're not actually being able to, you know, to play the field and to show your skills. And so, but one thing my mom always said to me is that don't ever talk about your side hustles at work. And that is, that's the one thing she said to me. My, my mom and dad always had this thing of where like, do not tell anybody that you own a property because that can stop you from getting a promotion. That can stop you. If, you, if they find out about this portfolio that you and your sister have, they might not give you a job. And, I, and it, at the awakening moment was just like, okay, they don't know about it. And they still don't want to give me the job. But last thing, I don't have any commercial acumen. <laughs> So, like, do you know what I mean? Whereas, like, if they, if they probably knew I had that side hustle or why I was doing that, maybe they still wouldn't have given me the job. But I would have been able to confidently demonstrate that I do have the commercial Actually, have that mm. Yes. So I think sometimes as well, like, don't dampen what you've done. Don't hide away your skills or, you know, what you're capable of doing. Like, show the world what you're capable of. And I think that's why, like, I'm so happy that the way Tolu Pong has grown, because you're actually showing the world what you are capable of and how you're able to connect with people and make and resonate with people and make people feel like, you know, if you're in debt, you can get through this too. And you only can do that through sharing your story. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so don't hide. <laughs> what about you, Sam? Um, I don't think I have specific examples. I think, for me, it's it's not necessarily other people making me feel like that, but me feeling it myself. So well, I think the majority of times, I, when I think about imposter syndrome, I always think back to interviews, like just sitting in an interview or about to go in an interview and just thinking, what am I doing here? I don't know what to say. I don't. I'm, I'm not good enough for this role. Why did I even bother applying? Just always stopping yourself. But I think when when, when you think about imposter syndrome, it's definitely something that can like you can stop your own bag basically you can stop opportunities that are lined up for you just because you don't believe in yourself you don't think you're good enough and I think for me how I kind of combat that is luckily I work well I work quite well under pressure so like I've done events as well I've done event coordination event planning and I would be I would walk into a wedding and a room full of people and just be so overwhelmed and think oh my gosh I'm not qualified to you know a arrange all of this organize tell people what to do delegate you know but then I would just have to go into action you know when 
when the light when the spotlight is on you you just go you know perform and that's how I've kind of trained myself to be that even if you're under pressure even if those thoughts come into your head you just have to keep it moving like your mind I keep saying your mind your mind but it's honestly so important because if your mind if you don't have that positive way of thinking you're never going to be able to combat those negative thoughts because they will come they will come especially when you do go into new spaces and you're trying out new things and yeah it's really it's really important no 100 percent, totally agree Tolu with you, as like. well like i completely agree with chris like tolu is somebody that she i like i would bring up my phone to like do an instagram story and she would literally <laughs> crumble like so to see her start her own brand cut, jump on lives like when i get the notification that tolu's gone live i'm like what like <laughs> it's, it's so amazing to see honestly like just by believing in yourself because I'm sure you can vouch, Chris, that we always tell her how good she is at talking, how much she's, you know, we can see her being herself. She's she's not playing a role. She's literally coming on live. She's connecting with people and she's being herself, authentic. Like, and yeah. until you believe it yourself, it doesn't mean anything. Like, people can tell you things all the time, but until you believe it yourself, you know, you're not going to be able to do what is there for you to do. So, yeah, proud of you. Oh, thanks, ladies. I'll pay you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> you said it perfectly just like <laughs> oh my gosh no I'm joking but no it's definitely it's something that I can't even say I've arrived at the solution yet like this imposter syndrome thing I don't think it's something that you just wake up tomorrow and you no longer feel like a fraud or you no longer feel like that you, or you start to feel all of a sudden that yes I belong here yes I own this space like for me anyway that's not been my experience and that's not been my journey like it's been two years since I started this Instagram account and a year since I've started my YouTube channel and still I feel like a fraud but I'm like you know what I'm still gonna do it as a fraud like until it sticks so that's what I do like yes I do feel like an imposter half the time because I just think like my background like I said earlier isn't in personal finance like my, I've come into personal finance from my own personal experience and it wasn't even until late last year that I even started monetizing my platform because to me I was thinking why would anyone pay me for this when <laughs> that's not my background they you giving me feedback <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> hubby's coming on the live as well but yeah <laughs> I can literally hear myself from both phones but yeah it wasn't literally until I was like you know what? I'm just gonna do this anyway what is the worst that can happen like I'm just gonna share my truth share my story and see what becomes of it and I've totally gone off track from what I was saying because he distracted me what I was saying was about the monetizing my platform so yeah last year like two years ago now my budget template that I initially shared I shared it with for free and I sent it out to free send it out for free to people because I was thinking, why would anyone pay me for this? Like, this is my template that I use for my money. Why would anyone pay for it? And that's the kind of things that I would tell myself for so long. So like if any kind of thing, I would never think to associate, attach money with it. I'll just do it because I know it's helping people. But it's like, okay, yes, fantastic. Totally. You're helping people, but well, you're not helping yourself. <laughs> like, why can't you help? Why can't you do both? Mm -hmm. But then, in my head, I'll be like, why would you do both? You're not a financial advisor. You don't have a background in accounting. Who are you to be telling people how to manage their money? You ended up in how much debt yourself. Like, all these things is what I would tell myself. But then equally, I have to tell myself, okay, yes, Holly, you were in that position, but you're not there now. You were able to pay off this yeah. debt. And then getting messages from people on my Instagram. So what Christina was saying earlier about people validating you, it does help. Because when you get the DMs from people that you've been able to help and they message, like literally today I got a message from one of the ladies saying that I've changed her life. I'm like, I changed your life. How can I change your life? <laughs> She's like, no, literally, I'm so happy I found your Instagram page. Like, you've literally transformed my life. I'm finally debt-free thanks to all your advice and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, it actually helps. It's actually helping people. And that just goes to show when you just don't allow imposter syndrome or those self-limiting beliefs to stop you from being a blessing to somebody else, it's, it's just going to help you grow. It'll help you grow as a person and it will help you financially as well, which is kind of brings it full circle back to why I was like, let's have this conversation on Team Money Talks, even though Team Money Talks is supposed to be all about personal finance, it's supposed to be talking about money, so different money topics. But I think imposter syndrome definitely relates a lot when it comes to personal finances because that imposter syndrome, syndrome is going to stop you from securing your bag. Like it's literally going to keep you from it because all these opportunities that will come your way, you're going to turn them down. You're not going to feel qualified enough to do it. So you're not going to do it. Or even like promotions, things like going for that role, like Christina mentioned earlier in terms of there's a role and it's paying like, I don't know, AEK, whatever it's paying. And you tick like half of the boxes. So you're like, no, I only tick 50% of it. I can't possibly apply, apply for it. These times, this guy over there, Bob is like, nah, I'm going to apply for that job. I ain't got none of that experience. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I'll work out when I get there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's 100%. the difference between, yeah, that self-limiting belief versus not. Like, just say no. I, even if I don't know it, I can learn it. So we've spoken quite at length about imposter syndrome. We've spoken about our experiences with imposter syndrome and how it's kind of affected us in different ways and manifested in different ways in our life. Oh, actually, this is a question that's off script, actually, that I'm going to throw out to you because you're both obviously women and your moms and you have children. And I'm just thinking it's, it's a good conversation to have as parents for our children. Like, what do you think you could do or what we could do as parents to kind of help our children not go down that same road or like to deal with it before it arises? Like, yeah, what kind of advice and strategies or what tools can we give our kids so that they don't, yeah, so that they have that resilience and they're able to kind of thrive? when they go out into a big bad world, do you know what I mean? Because yes, when they, when they go to school, they're going to have the teacher saying to them, oh, you know, maybe you shouldn't read that book's a bit hard for you or maybe you should not, not think about applying for that college. That happened to me too when my um, careers advisor was telling me not to apply to my university, just apply to one local in London because she didn't think I could get in. Like all of that kind of stuff is what you have to face later on in life. So it's like, what can we do so that our kids are resilient enough not to... Um, allow imposter syndrome to kind of affect them or stop them from getting to where they want to get to because ultimately it's something that I don't think is avoidable at the most part like I'm sure if you ask 90% of these people in this room today everyone deals with it in one way or another regardless of their upbringing you know, regardless of their background but then equally what can we do at least to equip them as much as we can to prepare them for it yeah it's a, it's a difficult one but I think it's a difficult one given the environment that we're in. Um, but I think the most important thing is to teach them a growth mindset. I think that's the most important thing because imposter syndrome kind of stems from the fact that you don't think you're good enough at doing a certain role. But the funniest thing is that everybody is growing. Like everybody, even the, the person that thinks they know it all in one topic, there's still more to learn and they're still growing. And so, you know, I always tell my children that as long as you can learn something and you're interested in it and you're passionate about it, don't let anybody tell you that, you know, you're not good enough to go into it because everybody should be able to be able to learn something or grow into a role. And I think even motherhood, don't we grow into the role? Do we know it all when we start it? So many mistakes, you know, so many things that our parents, even my mum, like when my children were born, she was imparting all this knowledge like, oh, you, you know, you've got to give the baby water, not just breast milk and all this stuff. And then we're told breast milk. And just it, just different things anyway. And some things my mum was like, oh, okay, that's new. I didn't know that. And obviously she's been a, lo- a mum a lot longer than I have, like maybe a good 25, 30 years longer than I have. But she, when I had my children and when my sister had their children, had her children, sorry, she was still learning things as a grandmother. So she she wasn't a perfect mum. You're, you're not a finished product. And I always I always say to my daughter that, everybody makes mistakes nobody's perfect i think sometimes we're led to believe that the only imperfect people are you know people of a certain stereotype or you know that we're not good enough and all that stuff i just think you just need to remind them that people are still growing nobody's perfect and you can you can either get better or something or you can move on and do something else and nothing is a final destination so just keep on just keep on imparting a growth mindset on them Mm -hmm. i agree i think um just obviously it goes without saying but building your children up and just you know letting them know that they can do whatever they want to do oh i flipped the camera yeah they can do whatever they want to do they can achieve whatever they put their mind to and mm. it's important to know that yeah you are gonna fail you are gonna make mistakes you are gonna you know maybe walk into a room and feel out of place but you have to be confident i think it's important that you said about the growth mindset because i think equally i don't want to you know have a child that is too confident to the point where they just think they know it all and you know they're not willing to learn and they just you know nobody likes people that are arrogant and just you know think they've arrived so but it's just about having that balance that yes you know I can do whatever I want to do I can do whatever I put my mind to and I can work as hard as the next person but I also need to remember that I am good enough you know I can I I can believe that I can do whatever I want to do and don't allow other people's because there's going to be even in school like at this young age kids kids can be so mean like kids say such horrible things sometimes and that can have an impact on children as young as our children you know from you know three four five six seven it it can really have an effect you you think you'd have to wait to get to that teenage stage no like even now 
Aiden comes home sometimes and says, oh, this person says this to me. And I think it's just mm -hmm. teaching them to co combat whatever's thrown at them negatively. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have yeah. to believe that just because that's what you were told. You don't have to believe that. But I think as well as making them aware that sadly we do live in a world where you might be judged by the color of your skin or you might be you know told that you're not going to do great in this area but they I, I want i want them to as well have you know feel that they can come and tell me anything and you know come and tell me that you know what this person said this to me what do you think about that and ha having that relationship with them whereby if they were told something they're not going to internalize it but they they will come to you and say oh this is what i was told so that you're able to uh. oh yeah. did we lose you Contra that. <laughs> So my battery. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Is it gonna yeah, hold up? Teaching okay. them to be resilient. Yeah. Teaching yeah. them to be resilient. Yeah. No matter what you're told, you can you can do it. You know? Yeah. And no, I totally agree with everything you both said. And I think the other thing that I would add to it is letting them have a voice. I think it's so important, like teaching them that they have a strong they have a voice, they have an opinion and they should not be afraid to share it or not be afraid mm. to walk in it kind of thing. So I think one thing if I could say that was not the greatest from my childhood or my upbringing on something that kind of ca I've carried into adulthood is that whole not having a voice yeah like so as a child children are supposed to be in, a, in the background they're not supposed to speak they're not supposed to have a voice like you just yeah. stay there quiet when adults are talking you children need to be quiet but I think that kind of thing doesn't help the children as they grow because then you take that into adulthood and I know for myself even like going into the workplace I, I've always had that hierarchy thing. So I've always seen, you know, I'm here, the manager's here, the next person's there. <laughs> and then that means what they say is right and that's it and not necessarily challenging it. But I want them to be able to have a voice. So if you see something and it doesn't matter if that person's all the way up here or down there, you can say something if you think that it's not right or whatever, as opposed to just taking things at face value because that person is more important or more senior or more superior to me. It's like, no, actually you have a voice, you have something to bring to the table, your opinion is valid. Not to say that they shouldn't respect the elders or anything like that, that's not what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But what I want them to know is that, yeah, they have, have a voice and they should be not afraid to share their voice and share their opinion and just walk in their truth kind of thing. I don't want them to feel like imposters. I just want them to, yeah, be the best versions of themselves really and just know that, yes, you are unique, you are amazing and you can do whatever you set your mind to and yeah, just really build them up with, like you said, resilience, self-confidence, self-esteem, all of that stuff is so important. Yeah. Uh, Challenge with <laughs> 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 Challenge with limits. Yeah, no, yeah, but no, it's important. Like, even in school and stuff like that, like, we just fed all of this information and we just take it all at face value without necessarily questioning, yeah. questioning any of it. And it's like, actually, some of the stuff that they taught us maybe wasn't the correct, the most accurate yeah. information, but we just take it all at face value because it's like, that's the teacher and I'm the student and that's it kind of thing. But I think it's important for them to. Think yeah, I, I, I don't even think that it was reiterated because I, I think that's a good point that you really made, Tolu, because you're saying that it went into the workplace as well and then you, you didn't challenge your manager or that person of, that was above you because you just you felt like yeah. I can't challenge that person because they're my manager, which is totally the wrong way to showcase who you are and what you do because I think like some of the people that do have that growth in the workplace are the people that are able to challenge exactly. their managers and to add to the conversation exactly. in, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But I think you made a good point when we were kids, we were told, Be that's quiet. your auntie, uncle, you can't yep. talk to them. Like, <laughs> go with it. Do you know what I mean? That you can't have a conversation with them and, you know, this is the distance. And like, I remember like, um, my mum didn't believe in this which is a good thing for us but I remember a lot of my friends parents at the time always said and including my dad actually the teacher is always exactly. right yeah. uh, and I you know that was like one big thing for me was just like the teacher is always the teacher can never be wrong mm. and like as we've seen like teachers are normal people they can be racist they can be good they can be they could have their own you know bad judgments you know they can come into they can come into work Drunk, they can have their fi favorite pupil and their most unfavorite pupil and i think for most of us that were taught that teachers are always right and teachers can never do no wrong we definitely brought that into the workplace with us and other hierarchy systems and it's so funny like you know you know the whole royal family we all know but what happened there and 11 million of us tuned in but that hierarchy system as well is is completely wrong like it's yeah. it's, it's what it's what makes you know people like my dad just sit there and just say, oh yeah the royal family like 
don't get me wrong, they're individuals, they're still human, they yeah. still cut, they still bleed. They're you know? still and, yeah. Yeah, it's a good color. But because that person is there and you're here, that means you can't talk to them and you can't <laughs> answer back to them and you can't challenge them because they're the queen and they're the royal family and they're a hierarchy and you're down there and we're up here and all of that things. Like, it's just completely wrong. <laughs> We're all that, equal, do you know? Do you, think that's, like, do you think that's like a, a African thing, a black thing, or just... I think it's a you... global thing. Because but I think it definitely happens a lot in the African community. I can only speak from my experience as a Nigerian, growing up as a Nigerian and knowing like how it was for my cousins and family friends and all of that. And that is kind of how you're taught. Like you said, Christina, the teacher's always, always right. And going into the workplace, like you said, it's so true because a lot of times, you know when you're at work and you're doing something and you're like, this don't make sense like this is yeah. not the most efficient way to do this but because that's how it's always been done and you're told that this is how you're supposed to do it and you're thinking okay this is taking two hours but the way i'm thinking it could be done in half an hour but because exactly. that's how it's always been done you just kind of have to put up and shut up because that's what you've been taught to do but really why can't you just say actually no this is probably a more efficient way to do this kind of thing but that was something that i'd struggled to do for years it was only probably in the last two years at my last employment that i actually was confident enough to actually say, actually, guys, I know I've been doing it this way because you told me to for the past seven years, but it's a waste of time. <laughs> waste of time. I think it's about your delivery as well. Like, it's about how you... If, you're, if, if you've noticed that something is not working or something's not quite right, it's about how you say it without coming across yeah, rude, without coming across disrespectful. And I think, I think for me, for my family, for example, my mum, I think she's kind of learned that, okay, do you know what? it's not rude if your child is having a conversation with you and they have a different opinion. Like, we've kind of taught her that, no, mum, like, you can't <laughs> think like that anymore. Like, just that. because I'm your child doesn't mean I can't disagree with you. I'm not being rude. I'm not disrespecting <laughs> you. I still honour you as my mum, but I just don't agree with you. But it's all about your... Because we know how Africans I are. Love, I love it when my children tell like, me. You're I love me. it. Like, yeah yeah i, I love it i completely agree with you samara i love it when my children challenge me like yeah like, when your children challenge you like how do you respond back because when my when my children challenge me i definitely give them a valid answer back but in in them challenging me and me giving a full explanation and sometimes i want to know what you both think as well i sometimes admit when i'm wrong with my kids 100%. which is something oh, yeah. yeah. if i'm to. wrong i will 100%. say to them i'm wrong and you know what in actual fact that that builds their confidence because they're thinking mm -hmm. you're the hierarchy and you're wrong. So that means that the hierarchy is 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 it can, be yeah. it can be wrong and it can be challenged. Time. And I love admitting, when, but what I found I found growing up African households they don't like admitting when they're what? <laughs> what? There's no such thing. Like they can't be wrong. Their, How their, their apology is? Are you hungry? Like there's no <laughs> such thing as wrong. Like no. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> <up>? no. <laughs> Do you want pizza? <laughs> Literally, like, no. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think. So how do you both, I guess, you know, how would you admit to your child that you're wrong? What, what's the sort of things that you would say or the scenarios that you would have with them? Do you know what? I, I, I do it all the time. All the time. Like, oh, do you know what? You was right, Aiden. you know? Mummy was wrong with that. Because I want them to know, especially as Christians, I want them to know that, Yes, like we're adults, but we're also sinners. We also do things wrong. We also do things that don't make sense sometimes. And I want, that's the thing. Like if, if you show them that you can make mistakes, that builds their confidence as well. Because they know yeah. that, do you know what? You're an adult, I'm a child and I knew this and you didn't, or I was right about this and you wasn't. And I think you're, you know, you're teaching them two things at once that it's okay mm -hmm. to own your mistake, mm -hmm. but you know you can also be confident to know that yeah do you know what i was right this time and mummy was right the next time like it's, it's all about how you demonstrate mm -hmm. that do you know what this is the kind of human that i want you to be and i, I also try to avoid that because i beca because i said so like because that's what i got growing up mm -hmm. you're told to do this because i'm the mom and you just need to do it but yeah. it's like I want them to have that mindset to understand why they're doing something. So I, I explain to them a lot, a lot, give them different yeah. scenarios. And yeah, we're all human at the end of the day. Nobody's perfect. And you're not just wrong because you're a child. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of children that are wiser than a lot of adults. So yeah. Exactly. You're not true to your child. It's so, so true. Food will it's always so, solve issues. <laughs> so yeah. let me just go back through the comments. How far did I get? Okay oh great question we need to equip our kids so true 
growth mindset is where it's at so going back to what christina was saying earlier growth mindset teach them to be resilient exactly um empowered by experiences and their voices matter yeah i really think that is so important having a voice mate i'm in my big big 30s it's only now i'm finding my voice like imagine yeah. i had this voice when i was a child god knows where i could be today so mm. i think it's important from a young age to definitely let them have their voices and let them let their voices be heard and let them know that they have they're valid and they have something to say doesn't matter if you're just se um, seven years old or nine years old or whatever the age is like you're relevant so yeah be active in your child's life especially when the child is at school then the teachers view your child differently that is very true you need to have that relationship with those teachers because otherwise yeah the child gets no love um no. <laughs> we are much wiser now elaine says yeah don't get me started with some teachers and um, wigs and clears yeah um it's sad when you heard people speak on their experiences with teachers telling them they will be a nobody oh yeah it happened to me many times steve harvey's okay. teacher told him the same yeah exactly the tr yeah that's true in jamaican and the same as well okay yeah builds co i love to admit being wrong yeah it builds confidence exactly that's a better way for them to learn yep 100 percent agree i love that mm -hmm. food will solve all issues oh yeah no <laughs> it does. i can't like that pizza was sweet um <laughs> so true admitting you're wrong shows them strength exactly mm -hmm. i apologize with banter look at your head <laughs> <laughs> But we say the word sorry sometimes, not just the banter. Yeah, the word sorry is <laughs> not hard. Like, but it's hard to say. But it's so necessary for kids to hear sorry from their parents. So, yeah, closing question because I'm conscious we've gone over our time by quite a bit. So, thank you guys for staying tuned. But I guess the last question would be advice to anybody that that is on the line now that maybe imposter syndrome is something that they struggle with that they're dealing with like what advice would you give to them to kind of overcome it obviously none of us are therapists or psychologists here so <laughs> this is just more from our own personal experiences of what we've kind of done to help us and yeah what you think would be useful for them to know um pra practically speaking going back to what we said about pausing yeah and taking time like what i mean from a practicality point of view i've experienced imposter syndrome on a weekly basis i some there's something that i come across that i don't think is going to happen for me or i'm not good enough at doing and how i deal with my um because as you said it's, it's all about the mentality and emotions i journal and i ask myself a series of questions as to and try and dig deep with just me and a pen or paper or you can google on your google notes um because sometimes i feel like us as humans whether it's a you're praying to god or you're journaling if sometimes feels a, it feels a bit easier talking in that way rather than talking face to face to a person because you don't want to really admit that you're having this in, in feelings of imposter syndrome so i just ask myself a series of questions um to build my self-confidence back up to where it needs to be in order to carry out the task at hand and i keep on asking myself really tough honest questions and answering them as brutally honest as possible so for example i say you know i want to let's just give the typical one i want to lose weight this week and oh okay i haven't done my exercise why haven't you done your exercise oh because it's too much and then you know you dig, you dig deep and just okay i'm feeling low i'm feeling sad i'm feeling depressed and then you know you dig deeper to find out what can you do to bring yourself out of that situation because i feel like if there's no you know i think we spoke about this in, during the week but if there's no hope if you can't see into the future and see the other side of what you need to achieve then you're always going to be left in that present moment of having that present feeling i think it's so important to journal and visualize the future and when i say the future i mean like it could be tomorrow two days next week a year from now just always visualize that future it always will give you hope that there is another day and as long as you've got life and breath in you, there's no reason for you to stay in that present moment of feeling that you're not good enough. That's good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, similar to Chris, I would say, write down like what you're good at, what are your strengths, what are your skill sets, what are your past experiences, what have you got from it? It doesn't have to be career related. It could be things you've done in life that you've realized, oh, do you know what? I'm good at this, I'm good at that. And if that doesn't help, ask other people, ask those around you, because it's true. Sometimes we don't see ourselves the way other people see us. Like people can see a lot more because we are the ones that see all the flaws. 
we see, you know, we know the thoughts that we have sometimes and the way we compare each other, compare ourselves to other people and other people don't see that. They just see you, they see what you're good at and it's important to, to feed back off of other people. And yeah, just if you, if you can, if, you, if you're in a moment where it's kind of taken over, just pause, like Chris said, pause. And they're kind of like irrational thoughts. So just rationalize, you know what? No, I am good at this. And just learn how to, to, to build yourself up basically, because you know, you can get, like I said before, you can get all the amazing words and uplifting you know, praise from other people. But if you don't believe it yourself, you're always gonna tear yourself down. So just kind of teaching yourself to step out of you and psych yourself up in those situations. You both literally summarised beautifully. I should have gone first. So I could have made this point, but <laughs> but no, literally, that's what I would say too. It's just the self with imposter syndrome. It's something that you're gonna have to, even if you're experiencing it. Like so, what I basically mean is people that you look at and you think that they've got it all together. A lot of them have imposter syndrome, but I guess the yeah. difference between them and you, or the difference between them and me, is that they don't allow it to stop them. So I think it, just appreciate that it's something that it's like, it's not something you're going to wake up tomorrow and no longer feel like an imposter. It's not something you can just ignore. It's something that's going to be there, but it's like, I need to go over this. I need to go past it. So yes, I can feel, feel like an imposter, but despite feeling like an imposter, I'm going to show up. Despite feeling like an imposter, I'm still going to apply for that job. Despite feeling like an imposter, I'm still going to reach out to that person on Instagram to join me on live. Like literally, and that's how I felt when I was doing Team Money Talk. So I remember before getting all the guests to come on the last season, I remember thinking, I can't be DM these, DMing all these people to come on my live. Like who am I that they're going to come on my live? I, literally, that was what I was saying to myself <laughs> before messaging them. And I remember it took me so long to approach some of my guests because I was just so scared of rejection and just thought that they would just not want to do it. Feeling like an imposter, feeling like I don't belong in this space. But I just had to just do it anyway, even though I felt like that for I still send those messages regardless. I was so scared opening the replies because I was thinking they're just going to be like, no, no way. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was scared of all the no's, but I just had to do it regardless of how it how I felt. So okay. I think just doing it regardless of how you're feeling will help you. And I think the more you do that, the more easier it becomes because now you have proof and you have evidence to show that actually I'm not an imposter because look, I've done X, Y, and Z. So I think the more you just take those little baby steps in that direction and just say, just have those little small wins and note them down and celebrate them, it's going to help build you up for the next opportunity and the next thing that you want to go for. So like going back to the whole speaking engagements and things like that, I remember the first time I was approached to do it, I was like, I can't do it. But then the next time I was like, no, if this opportunity comes again, I'm going to say yes. And I said yes, didn't want to say yes, but I said yes anyway. And then I did it. And now I've done one, I've done two, I've done three. And it's like, that's how you build it up. I'm still nervous every single time I go to speak, but I just have You're to still keep doing, doing it. it. Yeah, exactly. And you just have to keep pressing forward. And I don't know if this feeling will ever go, but I have to keep <laughs> pressing forward regardless. And I think that's what we kind of need to do. So if you are on a live now and it's something that you struggle with or you're watching the replay you're thinking oh I, d I can't do what these ladies are doing sitting on live talking in front of all these people just know that it happens we have that feeling before we go live but despite that we still have to show this up this is my <laughs> first live and i've been like oh exactly gosh, look yay <laughs> feel the fear and do it anyway <laughs> exactly this goes to yeah, show like, that you can laugh at how you felt <laughs> back then goes to show that you can overcome the madness of odds keep shining uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, bro. That's my brother, Stephen. <laughs> I was going to say something, but let me not see it. <laughs> yeah. I was going to start pitching. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, bad, yeah. No, amazing, amazing, amazing. So that's, yeah, literally in a nutshell, imposter syndrome is something we deal with. It's something we just have to accept. It's, it's there. We just have to kind of overcome it. Journal, like Christina was saying, make notes of it. Like um, Samara was saying, bring it to mind. Remember the times when you were able to overcome it and just know that you overcame it once, you can overcome it again and just know that it's a part of life. It's not something that's ever going to go away permanently. You just have to feel the fear and do it anyway and just accept that. It is what it is. I'm amazing. I can do amazing things. Keep reconfirming these things to yourself because I think all those negative talks that we have, we need to start reprogramming our minds to say... Affirmations. Daily affirmations. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Daily affirmations. Like, rather than saying, I don't belong here, I do belong here. I, be I, I deserve that opportunity. I just, like, just speak more kindly to ourselves. In the same way, 
we wouldn't speak to our friends the way we speak to ourselves. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. Like the things that we say to ourselves, you wouldn't say that to me. I wouldn't say that to you, but I That's can say true. it to myself. It doesn't make sense. So we definitely got to be kind. Be kind to yourself. Yeah. Like as and as you, say, you, say, you always used to say to me, Does that person have two heads? Like, <laughs> you had well, she can do the same thing. They don't have two heads. Nobody has two heads. So it's like the people that the difference between you and them is that they've just done it. They felt the fair and they've just done it anyway. So anyway. yeah, let that be encouragement to anybody watching on this live that yeah, feel the fair and do it anyway. You you are amazing. I'm amazing. We are all amazing and we're doing amazing things and we're gonna continue to do amazing things. And I wanna really thank you two amazing guests for joining me on the first episode of season two of Team Money Talk. It's been an amazing conversation, as I knew it would be. You both had so much to add to the conversation and shared so much nugget. This has been amazing, exactly. Thank you, Nads. It's been an amazing life. Thank you, well done, ladies. Proud of you. I'm proud of you too. I'm proud of us. Like, we've come a long way, ladies. <laughs> long way. <laughs> we've come a long way. Long way. We'll be here sitting on live, talking for over an hour. About <laughs> but it just goes to show, like... It's an important like, topic. Like, it's an important topic it's an important topic but yeah just a quick final round up ladies how can the guys find you any last words you want to share with the guys before we end any yeah um, or anything what I want to share um, keep following tolufringpong.com because she's paying me to say this <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah you can find me if anybody is going for a property renovation or interested in property you can follow christina dot at home on instagram and then you'll find my other links and websites um but yeah thank you very much tolly for bringing me on here today well Same. Done, thank you t you've been an amazing host you're, you're literally a natural you you've become a pro now but yeah, same. You can find me on Instagram at Samira Schofield. Same on YouTube as well. For any mummies out there who um, want to connect with any other mums, we've got a nice platform where we talk and we share, have open, honest conversations about our normal day-to-day -day life, good and bad. And yeah, let's connect. Let's meet up. Yay. And so next week, we'll be back again. Same time. So I saw one of the comments was asking if you're going to do this live again. So yes, I will be back the same time next week with a different guest to talk about another money topic in fact next week i have an amazing guest coming on to share her debt story so she's going to talk about how she was able to pay off over twenty thousand. it's a lot more than twenty thousand, but i can't remember the exact number but she's paid off a lot of debt in a very short space of time so she's going to come on and share her debt story next week so that'll be really really interesting so hopefully you guys will join us same time next week at 8 p.m thank you once again christina thank you samira you guys were amazing guests and you guys were amazing amazing um uh, what would I call you? Audience. You guys Audience. are amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what you guys? But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and have a lovely evening. Bye, Bye everyone.